people of Earth, your planet has to be destroyed. Ой, что это что он спирачит? Ты шел. А по части обоих что он спирачит, Торес? Ой, я урос. Адам тот добром. Hey everybody, welcome to Conspiracy the Show. I'm Adam Todd Brown. Who are you? I'm Laura Crawford. Laura's my co-host today. Yes. And it's almost more like I'm Laura's co-host today. <gasps> I'm steering this ship, baby. Because this episode was Laura's idea. Yes. And my inspiration. I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gonna be a lot of speaking of women rides. in space. <laughs> Hers was fine. Oh, Sally, yeah. Sally's ride went fine. Yeah, ride, Sally, ride. Right? How's it going? Going fantastic. Going good. I just did a show last night. I know you just saw Joker. So I saw Joker last night, so it's as if I, I did a show also. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you went to a comedy show. There was a guy who clearly has lots of mental problems and yeah. issues with food. And, and uh, he does stand up. And he does stand up. And uh, the show, the, the movie was not that great. That's what I've heard. If I'm being completely honest, I, I think I do the, believe the rumor mill. I think the good reviews are I, I think history will will look negatively on good reviews of this movie. Not from not for any political reason. Mm -hmm. I just think it's not a good movie. It's long and boring and the big twists are really, really fucking obvious. And yep. ugh. I didn't. The more I thought about it after I watched it, the less and less I liked it. Mm. Joaquin Phoenix, his performance is good, but he's a good actor. It's like Joaquin he's, Phoenix, yeah, he's good in a lot of things. It's a Joaquin in the park for him. Wow, <laughs> wow! Everyone just turned this episode off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for coming in, Laura. See you later. <laughs> yeah, that's been. Our, I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to let Winter host this episode because <laughs> you've proven so incompetent. She has to keep getting kicked out of the room. I got to figure out a better setup for oh all this. Uh, so what are we talking about today anyway? Today we are talking about the lost cosmonauts theory, the lost cosmonauts conspiracy theory. This is near and dear to my heart because it kind of plays into one of my favorite movies that everyone hates, which is so. Apollo 19. What? Which is a found footage horror movie oh, okay that takes place on a space shuttle mission in the or now no, i don't think space shuttle but uh one of our trips to the moon right and it's supposed to be our like lost our secret trip to the moon that ended in disaster so oh. we didn't tell anyone and then mm -hmm. they found the footage and part of the plot of that is that there were cosmonauts who made it to the moon and died there uh -huh. and history just covered it up. Exactly. That is pretty much in the vein we're talking about. It is incredible to me how well known moon landing conspiracies are. And uh, most people who like conspiracy theories are very aware of, you know, people say we didn't get to the moon or they're very quick to know a lot about NASA related conspiracies. But I had never heard of this cosmonauts theory until very recently. And, uh, so you're not dancing around it. Uh, so this theory basically states that unsuccessful Soviet space missions and the cosmonauts who flew in them, they were covered up by authorities to avoid negative publicity during the Cold War. Right. That and is, that's pretty much it. It covers a lot of different examples, but that's your basic theory you're working with. Right. Russia did do a lot of first in the space race, and they potentially did other things before even their successful missions that they covered up because they weren't. Uh, they didn't meet their their standards or the people who were involved were damaged afterwards in some way that they couldn't claim them as successful pilots. Right. Yeah. And it is um, when I first heard about it, I was immediately uh, believing I was, you know, I was very open to believing that that was the case because, you know, I think you can understand why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I it's mean, I, ho Union. I host a conspiracy theory podcast. Like, right. I, there's there's a lot. I don't have any trouble believing a lot of this. There's a thing at the end that I think, and it, I, I think there can be some holes poked in it. But, right. uh, yeah, the idea that, because it seems like the general idea is that, because Russia did put the first man in space, in right. space, but the idea is they tried a couple other times. Yes. And it failed. Uh huh. And they just covered that part up. Which, of course. Yes, it makes total sense. And everybody who's kind of familiar with history knows that uh, the USSR famously uh, 
airbrush people out of photos after they became, you know, political pariahs or they were disappeared in the gulags. And people are very aware of how history has been edited by propaganda agents within the Soviet Union and they've disappeared people who didn't they like. So stands to reason if there were failed cosmonauts or there were cosmonauts that were fucked up after their missions, they would cover it up. That makes total sense. And I totally get why people would believe that. But in doing my research, I am as are the experts, very thoroughly convinced that all of these cases are bullshit that they bring up and there's numerous ones and they are nearly all proven to be total horseshit. Right. But for interesting reasons. So we can get into that as we go on. Yeah. But uh, the story that I wanted to tell first, I don't know if you found this as thrilling as I did, but it was about Valentin Bondarenko. Yes. Okay. So the whole reason I got into the Lost Cosmonauts thing was that I was reading, I think it was maybe Today I Learned or something else, where I was talking about the horrific death of this uh, cosmonaut training uh, pilot named Valentin Bondarenko. And uh, basically, in na- April 1960, this young man, he's selected uh, for an elite cosmonaut training program with 19 other guys. And uh, they're trying to fly the Volstok spacecraft, which is what Yuri Gagarin took into space for the first man in space. So they, s- they get selected in March. They start training a month later and then about like a year later. So Valentin is training. He's in this 15 day endurance experiment. Right. He's on day 10 and uh, it's at the Institute of Biomedical Problems in Moscow. What a name. What a name. The Institute of Biomedical Problems. The Institute of Biomedical Problems. Like they make problems. (laughs) It's the Institute of Problems. We produce problems here. (laughs) Of a biomedical nature. And in this case, they did produce a fucking problem for this guy. They really did. So Valentin was working in a low pressure altitude chamber with an atmosphere release 50% oxygen. So that's not a normal uh, scenario that anyone on Earth would be in. At the end of his shift, which I imagine was probably like very long, <laughs> he, uh, he takes off the biosensors that are on his body. You know, those little sticky pad things that you would right. you were getting EKG or something. And he washed his skin with a cotton ball he'd soaked in alcohol. When he finished, he tossed it towards the waste bin. Instead of landing in the waste bin, the cotton ball landed on this hot plate that he had been using in the chamber to make tea. <laughs> the ball burst into flames and he tries to cover the smother the flames with his coverall sleeve, but that sleeve ignited. So a doctor was monitoring this experiment, but he couldn't get the chamber door open to free him for 30 minutes because it was the, the pressure differences between right. internal and external. So Valentin is finally rushed to a hospital and he has third degree burns over so much of his body that the only place they can get an IV in is in his feet. Yeesh. To start treatment. So after 16 hours, he dies of shock. And during this time, Yuri Gagarin, who's the first man in space, he's at his bedside because they're cosmonaut training buddies. And uh, he was 24 years old, Valentin. And then three weeks later, Yuri Gagarin's in space. It's just insanely That's, tragic. Yeah. And uh, so he was the youngest member of and that's, cosmonaut that's a class. confirmed story. That's not that like is a confirmed United story. States so propaganda. I'll get into what, how people learned about this. So it, it was also I was just thinking weird to think about his age. So he, when 1957 Sputnik one launches, Valentin just graduated high, uh, flight school, flight school. So that's how young he is. So his nickname right. was Tinkerbell. Oh, which that doesn't adorable. seem nice. Well, Valentin Jr. He's the youngest guy. So yeah. basically, he had been filmed and photographed training with cosmonauts, but the press never reported his death in this experiment. It was completely covered up. No one reported it. And then he was photoshopped out of key pictures with other cosmonauts after he died. And then his death... Airbrushed out, probably. Airbrushed not out. photoshopped Sorry. out. Sorry. Airbrushed out. You're right. Also, <laughs> trademark, it's a whole lot, also yeah. trademark product. <laughs> going to be our uh, bonus episode did photoshop <laughs> exist in the 70s yeah it was invented by hedy lamar after she invented <laughs> the internet uh so uh, the public there's these rumors going around that uh he had died in a failed flight experiment and that other guys had died in failed flight experiments so in 1980 the details of his death are reported in the west and then soviet citizens learned about that accident in a news article six years later so not till 86. 86. But think about how slow that information flow is. Just in time for Chernobyl to happen. Exactly. And for them to forget about all of it. Yes. So here is a confirmed case of a cosmonaut's death being covered up. Right. And him being airbrushed out of photos and his death not being reported and that causing a rumor mill to swirl that it was the same thing repeated. So that's a confirmed true case. So in that case, he's is sort of a lost cosmonaut. 
Right. But the other cases we're going to go into are not like that at all. No, they are a little more as fantastical as that tale is. Yeah. They get crazier. Yeah. If you, uh, you know, if you love the idea of the tragic, horrific death of a beautiful young man burning in flames for a half hour while scientists can't do anything. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes.